Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to stay on point. Uh, you appreciate that. Uh, in talking about leadership development, but Daniel is exactly right. Uh, it's only by equipping the people of Alabama uh, with the vision, not equipping them, but sharing them with people of Alabama the vision, the values, and a strategy that can take us to new heights, a place we've never been before. And that place is a place where we have a temporary democracy that is transparent, democratically accountable, inclusive. Uh, we've never had that before. <laughs> Not all those things together. And that's a culture shift. And part of that culture shift is to get out of this long range pattern of relationships where we, the voters, are treated as consumers. And we're treated as those who go shopping every cycle to, to the shelf. And all too often, uh, like the street tied soap and fail, same soap, different box. Uh, and we fall for the ads, the attraction of other boxes, rather than the content and clear the power of what's inside. Uh, the people didn't make that happen, power made that happen. Uh, we talk about access to the ballot. We talk about access to rental office, where it is where, where it's economically infeasible uh, for, for many low-income people to uh, to run. But in that kind of a context, I want to talk about leadership development through a story. Greater Birmingham Ministries is a group of 22 different faith communities. We say that because different religions have different terminologies for their structures. But think of it like this, where our membership is the Catholic Diocese of Birmingham, the Episcopal Diocese of Birmingham, the uh, uh, United Methodist uh, uh, Conference, North Alabama Conference. So we have membership at that level, sponsorship at that level. It's our job to go out and get the people in the pews, right? They don't deliver people to us. We got to go find them and recruit them and develop them ourselves. Secondly, we have a three-part program of, we are the direct services organization. We are a community organizing organization, and we are interfaith dialogue organization. And those things we call direct services, uh, systems change slash community organizing, and faith in community. And our motto is serve people, build community, and pursue justice. Uh, about leadership development. This story is about how, well, what does direct services have to do with systems change and changing policies for the better? Because we see and interview 4,000 low-income families per year, um, uh, we provide food, free food every Friday. We talk to people about what conditions they are suffering from and, 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 and what's going on in their lives, not just uh, distributing groceries. It was through that when a young woman came to us in 2013 for food on a Friday. We asked her, why are you here? Of course she says. Y'all give food on Friday, same for food. But we asked her her, her backstory and asked her if she had applied for food stamps. Then she dropped it on us. I can't get food stamps. I'm not allowed to. I said, why? Are you qualify income wise? Yes, I'm a nonviolent drug offender. At Alabama, you're banned for life if you're a nonviolent drug offender. What had happened was back in the war on drugs in the 90s, all, most states had that. But state by state had dropped it through a waiver. Alabama was one of five states to still retain that. We did not know that. I met with the governor. He didn't know that. Uh, but, but the people who were nonviolent drug offenders who were out trying to struggle for a life, they knew that. Her name was Jackie, and we worked with her to develop her leadership skills, her uh, ability to speak publicly, and we began to build allies with other organizations to tell this story. To make a long story short, because of her ability and also to recruit other ex-offenders and have them articulate the story. So she built a group called ACT, called Action Changes Things, uh, that she had to lead. And by giving public testimony and public hearings and talking to legislators who didn't know this existed at all, getting rid of that requirement, getting rid of that punishment, that's a lifetime punishment. You may serve three years in prison, but you, you, you are banned for life from receiving assistance. We were able to get that uh, through working with uh, groups like Alabama Rise and others to have her condition 
uh, uh, that's the way it's eliminated and changed the cost of law. As of February the 1st, 2016, that is no longer the case here in Alabama. We moved from direct services case where the issue was food right now to a policy change that affected 100,000 people across the state. That to me is uh, 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 taking a transactional relationship of uh, providing food to the hungry and change it to a transformational leadership where those who are oppressed become leaders in their own liberation.